Since following in the footsteps of his father, Jack, John O'Shea has certainly carved out a consistent and highly respected career, particularly on the country circuit and also when he makes a rare trip to headquarters. I caught up with John prior to his engagements at Club and Eagle today. Well, John, good to catch you out there. As I mentioned, following in the footsteps of Dad and as far as you were concerned, never any doubt that you were going to be a harness racing trainer driver. No, probably not. Wasn't really smart enough to do anything else and didn't have much interest, to be honest. And your father certainly did have a very long and successful career. Yeah, you know, he was in it for a long time and he really enjoyed it, so it's always good. Joe, what would be the main thing you'd take out from learning the business under, your, under the care of your father? Uh, he was very patient. He actually was a very good horseman, though. He was good with him. He never sort of had anything fantastic, but did a good job with what he had. You're now 19 years into your career and you started out with the Mini Trotters, but not for long. No, I didn't really like going slow, so... and. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather, the, I preferred the older horses and then once your time sort of comes up where you can get your licence, I did. You're not one for stats, but you've certainly had a very successful career. You've driven close to 900 winners. It'd be somewhere around that, I think. So, yeah, it's been good. I had never had any sort of brilliant parts of it, but it's always been consistent. What about training these days? How many horses do you have in work? Uh, there's only four, four older ones, but there's ten babies there, so that's a good sort of mix. Growing up in the Bathurst region, a very tough environment with all the Turnbulls and Hewitts, and particularly with the Turnbulls now, they, that clan keeps getting bigger and bigger and more successful, but a wonderful learning experience. Yeah, that's for sure. They're a tough bunch and they're good to learn with. What would be one you could pinpoint as far as being your idol in that particular area? Oh, definitely early days, if I could get on Steve Turnbull's back in a race, I'd just follow him everywhere because he didn't make bad choices and it was a great thing to learn from. 2013, 14 certainly started to see your career turn around. 89 wins for the season, ninth of the New South Wales Premiership, and it's just continued to flow on from there. And you've topped the three figures. Yeah, no, it's been good there. Um, it started there. We had dropped off there in between, sort of travelled to America and things like that. But um, yeah, it's always been consistent. You enjoyed a good association with Jack Butler, and no doubt. Uh, you still have very fond memories of that association to the point where 2015 you decided to follow Jack to Queensland. Yeah, there was just a patch there where I had the opportunity. It was probably a bit stale here and went up there and drove for Jack again and we had really good success. And I had a great time. It was really fun but chose to come back home and, um, yeah, it's been good. And Jack has certainly carved out an, an outstanding career in Queensland since he's been there. A few health issues but all the news coming back from Queensland now and, and particularly from you, very positive. Yeah, let's hope so. Jack's had a great career. He's a really good trainer and he deserves all the accolades he gets and, yeah, hopefully his health holds up for him. Your association with Lester Hewitt, a, a renowned, outstanding trainer, when, how did that all begin? Um, I can't remember where it really started. Probably Armbro Johns was sort of the main focus on that. I sort of got to drive him a fair bit and he was really good. Yeah, one outstanding performer, Armbro Johns, 50 starts, John 90 wins, seven placings, five as runner-up, Newcastle Derby and a four-year-old New South Wales Breeders' Challenge. Yeah, no, he was a nice horse. What about another one that Lester had? He's charming. Yeah, he was also a nice horse. Not probably the most switched on creature in the world, but had the potential. Once again, a very successful career. 44 starts, 14 wins and 10 placings. Yeah, definitely. He had a good career. He came here and Jason Grimson had him and he had success with him here too. So, no, he's been a lovely old horse. Your career nosedived in 2023 at Ugarry. You had a very bad fall to the point where you had a broken wrist and also a fracture in the back. How did that all pan out? Yeah, it's ended up good now. It's just a long time to heal and very boring. And um, But, yeah, it's eventually just all come good. That was the first time you suffered any severe injuries? Yeah, that was the first time and hopefully the last. John, what was the full extent of the back injury? Oh, just the first vertebrae shattered, then the next one fractured, and there's two little things off the side that broke off, and there's really nothing you can do about it. It just heals naturally itself. What was going through your mind when you got that news? To be honest with you, there was a lot of drugs. I can't remember a lot of it. <laughs> Apart from being an astute trainer and driver in your own right, you're also very keen to follow the progress of horses following their racing careers. Oh, you'd like to see the ones that you race at the go or ride or any horse to, to go and have another life afterwards like yeah you'd hopefully that they have another part of their life after racing well, it's been good to catch up with you thanks for your time thanks mate